Hello and welcome! This is Mouse Gunner, and I'm finally back with some more Stellaris. I covered this game in a series after its initial launch, but since that series finished up, I haven't really played the game. Now, I did like it, and I especially like the early stage of the game. That part of the game was fantastic. It had a lot of things that were very compelling and interesting. But once you got past that early stage of the game and you got more into the midpoint and later in the game, a lot of that, those elements that were compelling in the early stages, the exploration, the different events that you have, they started to kind of fade away and the game started to turn more into a slow grind of just taking over the galaxy. And as much as I enjoyed that first playthrough, I feel like the way the game was designed, it did, lost a lot of its replayability to me because that early stage of the game is very interesting, but once you've experienced once, it loses a lot of its value because a lot of it was in that first time playing it, first time experiencing it kind of thing. So as much as I liked the game and as much as I thought it was a good game, a solid game, I felt like it was lacking in development, like it needed something a little bit more. And what has drawn me into playing it again is the first major expansion. Now, this isn't the first DLC for this game, but the first DLC was just a species pack of the plantoid races, which really didn't draw me into playing the game. It just playing as different races, which honestly is mostly just appearance-based. Uh, whether you play as a mammal or a reptilian uh, species doesn't really matter as far as the way the game plays. So now we have a DLC that actually impacts the game play, and that is the Leviathan Story Pack. As well as a patch that also released uh, along with the uh, DLC uh, coming out, which is version 1.3. Now, the last version I played was the initial launch version, so there's gonna be some changes that uh, from the version of the game that I played, so and because it's been uh, a little bit of time, it's going to take me some time to familiarize myself with the gameplay and just get back into the groove of things. So let's go ahead and hop in here. Now, I did create a race specifically for this series, and I, I'm calling it the Redwall Abbey Empire. Now, this is based loosely off of uh, the Redwall series of books, and the uh, actual species slash race is uh, a mouse or mice. Uh, so I tried to uh, get my racial traits to go kind of along what I felt like would be the traits for a mouse. And I know this doesn't look too much like a mouse, but it was the thing that I could get to look the most like a mouse. So just, this is a mouse. I, I know it doesn't look like a mouse, but it, it's a mouse. Trust me. <laughs> Any case, uh, so as far as my racial traits, I'm weak, fleeting. So leader lifespan is lower, so it will be hard to have more experienced leaders. But we're rapid breeders. We're nomadic, so we spread out, and then we're agrarian, which uh, produces more food. So this is going to be a population that expands quite quickly. As far as my government, we have divine mandate. Uh, the ruler of my empire is an abbot or abbess, depending on their uh, sex. And we have, uh, as far as things go, collectivist, xenophile, and spiritualist. And again, I'm trying to go along the uh, the novels here, uh, Red Roll Abbey. And I was kind of torn on exactly how to do this. Spiritualist kind of makes sense, although religion wasn't too strongly pushed in the Red World series. I mean, you had the leader being an abbot, uh, and there was some semblance of uh, spirituality, I guess you could say. Uh, Xenophile, because Red World Abbey was pretty open to outsiders. They, I mean, our main race is going to be, uh, you know, mice, but... There are many different uh, races in Redwall. There were rabbits, there were badgers, you know, you know what have you, all the different uh, uh, species slash races that existed in the Redwall series. Now, usually uh, the different races were, you know, divided in kind of like good and bad lines, but there were times in the novels that traditionally bad races were allowed within the Abbey. It depended upon the person. So in that case, I gave it uh, Xenophile, so we're a little bit open, but not fanatic. We still uh, are a little guarded, but we're open to uh, newcomers. Nothing here is fanatic. There's no fanatics, 
spiritualist, there's no fanatic xenophiles, and then collectivist, again, I was torn on this, because the Abbey itself kind of behaves in a collectivist nature, and that it's, you know, everything for the group. But you also have a little bit of individualism. You have the abbot who's the leader. You usually have certain roles in uh, the abbey, usually. And then you usually have the traditional warrior. First off, our first leader is going to be Martin. Uh, so you have Martin the warrior. And you had other characters in the series that rose up as the hero, the champion of Redwall Abbey to fight the various evils that oftentimes the abbey encountered. So... I, I was torn on this, whether to go individualist or collectivist, because again, there is a sense of individualism in the Abbey, but even still, when you have the champion, what is the champion fighting for? He's fighting for uh, everyone else. He's sacrificing himself uh, to to save everyone else in the Abbey. So I went with collectivist, although I, I could see an argument either way. As far as the world, I went with the continental world. Uh, weapons, I went with mass drivers, usually... The Abbey used projectile weapons pretty extensively. Uh, slings uh, was uh, a weapon type that was used quite a lot. The squirrels used uh, bows and arrows quite a lot, but we're playing as mice, and the mice traditionally use sling stones, so, or slings, shooting sling stones. So I went with mass drivers. I went with warp travel, pretty standard. I actually haven't played a series with warp travel. The one series I played was actually with hyperspace uh, lanes. So this will be different for me, a new experience, and then this is the uh, ship design I went with, which is the humanoid ships or mammalian ships, which would, would have you. There's only like six different uh, ship types, and they kind of lump the humans and mammalian species into one category. So I went with that for the most part with the city design and the ship design. So let's go ahead and select that, and now it's time to select the actual galaxy. Now, I think in my uh, first playthrough, I went with everything being small because it was me testing out the game, getting a f uh, feeling for the game because it's the first time I ever played the game. So I played as a test or a race, testing out the game. And I went, I went with things small just so we kind of had a small sample of what things are. I'm going to go ahead with go with a medium size uh, galaxy. This time, galaxy shape. Uh, I think I did elliptical last time. I'm going to go with uh, spiral two arms this time. Something a little bit different. Uh, AI Empires, I'm just going to go with whatever standard default it gave me with the size. So 13 is fine with me. Advanced AI starts, 4 is fine with me. Max Fallen uh, Empires, we have 2. Again, I'm just going to go with the default for, with most things. Habitable Worlds, default. AI Aggressiveness, we're just going to go on normal, normal difficulty. Allowed FTL method, any. And then we've got the uh, cluster, everything. I'm just going to pretty much put on default except for Iron Man mode. I'm not going to do that. Just because the fact that I'm recording, sometimes you have issues with recording uh, software, just recording process, and I don't want to have play the game, have some issue with my recording, and then not be able to come back. So for that reason, I'll be not using Iron Man mode. But outside of that, we're going to be using everything else. I do, I believe, have the DLC turned on. At least it should be. Let's go ahead and hop in. All right, we've loaded in, and this is actually my third attempt at a start here. I had uh, the first two attempts not go very well. As a matter of fact, I actually ended up changing the game parameters because I am I was tired of having the exact same thing happen to me in both instances. And it was one of those things where I had to play for like a good half an hour before I, had, I realized that the start was, you know, not something that I could uh, really use. Uh, too really difficult of a start. So, because of those first two attempts, I kind of familiarized myself with uh, the interface and some of the layout. But first, let's go ahead and take a look at our system. So, we're in the planet Redwall around a gas giant. And we're in the system Mossflower. Now, you have two different system types you can choose from. The Soul System, which mimics uh, our system with the Sun and Earth and all of that. And then you have this system, which I can't really remember the name of, but it's the second choice you have. And I chose that because uh, I already did a Soul System playthrough on my first attempt, or my first series. So I figured we'd do something a little bit different. So let's now take a look at our place in the galaxy. So we're pretty close to the middle here and the center of one of these spiral arms. Uh, unfortunately, it looks like we have some planets already within our Empire's space. But uh, because we're kind of at the edge here, 
looks like there's not many stars over here that we can really go into. Now, to explain really quickly what happened in the first two attempts, when I was exploring, uh, I uh, pretty much immediately encountered another alien race. And, and at least this is what happened in the first attempt. This happened pretty much in the second attempt as well. Encountering an alien race pretty much immediately. That alien race had its home system really, really close to my home system, practically on top of me. And uh, once I actually established contact with them, I uncovered that they were an advanced start AI. And both my first and second playthroughs. So an advanced start AI literally right on top of me. So this means that they have technology that I don't start with. For instance, I have to research colony ships to be even able to colonize a uh, system. Well, they started with that tech. So they very quickly overwhelmed me. And on top of that, they were antagonistic to me. Uh, our different government types were diametrically opposed. They were individualists versus my collectivists, what have you. That made them not have really good relations with me. And on top of that, there were border tensions immediately because they were literally on top of me. And they pretty much expanded out and surrounded me very quickly to the point where I had nowhere to go. So both of those playthroughs, I was just like, you know what? I've got these advanced AIs that are hostile to me, that have surrounded me. Not really a good start. So second attempt, I do the same thing. Same thing happens. So with this attempt, I've turned off the advanced AI starts. There's still going to be fallen empires, and there's a possibility one of those will spawn right next to me. But all of the other empires I should encounter should start with the same level of technology I do, so we don't have that overwhelming force that we meet so early in the game that we're, it just snowballs and there's nothing we can do about it. So, in any case, let's go ahead and get started here. And the first thing uh, I'm going to want to do, actually, is change some policy things, because I'm going to want to roleplay Redwall somewhat. So we have slavery allowed. I'm going to prohibit that because I don't feel like that is in keeping with what Redwall is all about. Now, when you make a change like this, it takes 10 years before you can change your policy again. Also, we've got Purge. I don't really like the idea of that. That doesn't seem in keeping with the Redwall Abbey and the way that it operates. So we're going to be turning off Purges. Now, that is going to limit me on some of the things I can do uh, against primitive cultures and things like that. But I don't think that's appropriate for Redwall Abbey to allow purges. Last thing is migration. We have prohibited. That doesn't seem to make sense with our race. Our race is nomadic. It uh, has uh, a good amount of population growth. We want people to freely be able to move. So I'm going to say free migration. Now, I think uh, when I was looking at primary species only, this would make some population unhappy. Well, this, on the other hand, wouldn't. So let's go ahead and do that. And then, otherwise, I think we're pretty much good on policies. Now, the policies do affect diplomacy. That's something that didn't exist in uh, my playthrough of the game, but it's something I noticed when I encountered other alien races, that they did care about how your policies were set up. So if you have Purge and they don't agree with that kind of uh, policy, it will hurt your relations. So that's one of the reasons why I did that right off. Now, the next thing we're going to want to do is technology. So we have a leader here that gives us a flat bonus, uh, 10%. This is really good, as a matter of fact. And we have industry and material uh, bonuses. So we'll have to see what we actually pick here. So let's start down here. So we've got missiles, not really keen on that. We've got macroeconomics, and then we've got upgraded uh, guns. Well, I guess we'll take that. Uh, I don't really know if we need uh, the engineering facility. I'll go ahead and take the co coil guns. It does match what he's got a bonus in, so we'll go ahead and do that. Then we have over here, well, we've got solar panel network, which would match his bonus. We also have increased sensors and better shields. So I'm going to go ahead and do the solar panel network. That can be pretty useful, and the fact that we have research bonus sounds like a good idea. Then finally, we have society research. I'm going to go ahead and do colony ship here because uh, we want to be colonizing as quickly as possible. But we could also do or orbital hydroponic farms or a bio lab. But colony ship, I think, for sure. All right. Now let's go ahead and take a look at our planet. So our governor, actually, let's take a look at our leaders. Our governor has stuff to do with, does with slaves. Well, you're not going to have slaves, so that's kind of moot. Uh, and then we also have a guy that has anomaly research bonuses. Okay. Well, that will be useful, possibly. We also have our leader uh, that we want to take a look at. So we've got Martin, who's warlike. 
and a fertility preacher. We're like kind of makes we're like kind of makes sense with Martin. Eventually, we'll get an heir uh, as we play the game. In any case, let's uh, stop jumping around so much and let's go over to the surface of the planet. So we've got some blockers to clear. I figure let's go ahead and clear this blocker for energy. And we also have a field here that we're working. I'm not noticing that many minerals on our home planet, so that could be a little bit rough. Uh, although we do have a mine here that we're working. And we do have a penalty to mining because of our weakness. But I'm going to go ahead and build a uh, farm here, uh, which would increase the food production. Yeah, not having more minerals is kind of a rough start. Hopefully we find some in our system. Let's go ahead and grab our science ship and start a survey of that system. And then the construction ship is just going to have to sit tight while we explore. Okay, so let's go ahead and continue. And you might as well grab our military ships and do a little bit of exploration here. So what I'm going to do is have them jump around into the systems that are within our empire. And then we'll do all the ones that are within warp range of our home system. So just go kind of zigzag around here. And the whole idea here is I'm just checking to see if there's any hostiles. And then I'll just jump back into my own system. All right, let's go ahead. I'm going to go at two speed. This gives me the opportunity to actually respond to the... to any uh, encounters that may happen. And so we have an air. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. So our heir is 19, uh, Martin is 38. Our heir is charismatic and home in the sky. Okay, so if uh, Martin dies, that is who's going to take over. I like the food production bonus. That definitely helps. Ship cost, army cost, okay. Probably not going to be useful early game, but the food production definitely will be useful. All right, there goes our military ships. So nothing encountered here. What do we got here? Continental world, which is habitable. 13 size. So a little bit smaller than I think our home system. Let's actually see. Yeah, usually your home system is about this size, I believe, 18. So, so far, no encounters. I don't know if our sensors would pick that stuff up. So maybe that's, you know, something that we would have known anyway if there had been baddies around us. All right, good habitable world here. Probably I want to colonize things a little bit further away, so it's good to have those options open. Now, obviously, I'm not going to be surveying these systems. Just kind of just checking them out to make sure there's no enemies. All right, nothing over here. Now, this is some kind of uh, special system. Is it a pulsar? Usually it says, yeah, pulsar right there. There are some planets in there, though. Okay. Nothing over here. And I think that's what our military ships are just going to do, is just kind of figure out some planets that might be good uh, places to survey in the future. Uh-oh. Okay, so we've got... We have encountered some form of alien vessel and moss flower system. These strange objects have been flagged as alpha aliens. Until we can learn more about them, we should proceed with caution. The Redwall Abbey has finally encountered fellow wanderers among the stars. Despite their intentions being unknown and potentially even hostile, the atmosphere on Redwall, following the report from our contact, fleet can best be described as rapturous. So this is a neutral entity and appears to be space cows. Okay. So, uh, I didn't encounter them in my other two attempts, so I'm glad I'm actually encountering uh, things like this rather than other empires. It made me a little nervous when I saw that contact. So the space cows are harmless. They're nothing to worry about, uh, although you can kill them if you want. Anomaly found. Okay, we found an anomaly. It's a pretty um, tough anomaly to research, so I'm going to leave it be for now. So far, no real hostile contacts. But also no uh, 
Now, the number of empires should be the same. I did reduce how many advanced starts. Well, there's no advanced starts now, but the number of uh, empires is going to be the same. So I think there should be roughly 20 empires, including my own. Construction complete. All right, so we have completed something on the surface of Redwall here. So let's take a look at that. I guess we can go ahead and have time pass while we do that. Okay, so our leader has gained uh, a level. Uh, I'm going to assume that this is still tough for him. 35%. So probably... Uh, where is that? Because I don't want a bad anomaly in my home system. Over there. Okay. Oh, we'll check that out. What, what does it actually say? It says... Rest of structures, litter, tumbleweed surface, practically begging for archaeological work. All right, well, we'll uh, we'll hold off on that for now. Oh yeah, surface. Okay, so we built that. We're gonna have a population soon. I'm gonna go ahead and build this. Uh, so we're gonna want a power plant. <laughs> And then I'll grab this population move over there. Alright, no real hostile contacts so far. Huh. I don't remember if I checked that system out or not. Alright, so now we're going to go a little bit further. So, I'm going to queue this just because I don't know if he went that way. It's going to be harder and harder for me to keep track of where I've jumped into eventually, but I'll go ahead and jump over there. You know what? I'm just going to continue over in this direction for the meantime. We'll hop around, come over here, and check out some of these stars. So our ships are going to be a little bit on the busy side. Then, I don't know if we check this star out, and then I'll go back into our home system. To kind of do a circuit. Can't really search too much down here, because it's kind of uh, empty, so. System survey complete. Alright, so we fully surveyed. Not a whole lot in our home system. That kind of hurts, because minerals are a little bit lacking. What I will do, though, is I'll grab my construction ship and just have them build a mining station to pick up that energy. And then I'm going to grab my science ship. And so far, it seems like the best candidate for survey is over here. So we'll go ahead and survey this system. Although, technically, surveying the systems nearby would actually be a little bit better. So why don't we do that instead? So we'll survey this system and then this system. Are these within my border or not? The system and... Uh, system is not claimed by any known empire so just these two planet systems i'll survey them to see if we can get any mine uh, minerals because we're going to need them because our home system is kind of weak okay still no hostile encounters so far and also, no empires encountered. So we have a little bit more breathing room this time than in my previous attempts where we had empires literally on top of me. That's good news, in my opinion. I mean, it's, it's fun to encounter another empire early, but not to have them spawn literally, like, over here. Like, right on top of you, so your borders are li literally touching from the game start. That's not so great. Especially when they have advanced tech over you. So I would have preferred the situation. Oh, well, there we go. There's an empire. So it didn't take too much longer. We've encountered some form of alien vessel in the Shukan system. These strange objects have been flagged as beta aliens. Until we can learn more about them, we should proceed with caution. I'm not going to really do anything with them yet. As a matter of fact, I did queue going through there. So I do have to keep in mind that I may have a conflict with these guys, possibly. Construction so, complete. This is their home system for sure. 
be completed the construction. That's fine. All right, so here's our vessel. There's their military vessels. They're not engaging me, I don't think. So we can probably just jump out without any conflict. All right. Construction complete. So that is somewhat close. All right, so we've got surface construction done. Um, go ahead and grab this population point, put it over there, and then we'll build another farm. All right. What I wanted... Ooh, we have a hostile. Let's see what these guys are. Huh. Yeah, I'm not familiar with whatever this is. They look a little bit like the space amoebas, but uh, different, definitely different than what I'm used to. And this is a pretty high military power. Hopefully we don't encounter them. Uh, we do have some energy over here. I don't know if I want to build anything yet, and I can't really afford to build anything anyway. All right, hopefully these guys aren't a problem. Not many habitable worlds we're encountering here. I mean, habitable for my empire. All right, well, they went away. Did that not trigger an event? Let's take a look at that. No, huh, that, didn't, that did not trigger an event. That's weird. Because they're definitely different aliens than the space cows. Still no real hostiles here. Ooh, situation there we go. We have encountered some form of alien vessels in the uh, Uram system. These strange objects have been flagged as game aliens. Until we can learn more about them, we should proceed with caution. So we do have empires nearby. This one's a little bit on the end top of us. Nature. And then we did queue a move through there, so we'll be jumping system on their survey system. Complete. Okay. Wow! We are getting crapped on with our start. This is the poorest start so far I think I've had as far as uh, minerals and things and systems around me. Okay, we'll jump out. So as long as these aren't fallen empires, which it doesn't appear they are, Alien We've encountered some form of alien vessel in the Bristler system. These strange objects have been flagged as Delta aliens. Until we learn more about them, we should proceed with caution. Fleet okay, it is a hostile, and it is attacking us, so we're going to lose our fleet here. Um, it's going to be 28 days. Yeah, I just lost my fleet. Well, that sucks. It was those uh, one things. Well, we finally did encounter them. Unfortunately, I jumped on top of them, so I just lost my fleet. Well, you know, sucks, but uh, things happen. We we're obviously risking our fleet and sending them out there in the first place. Uh, I unfortunately can't really uh, build that fleet back up, so we're just going to have to sit and be patient. All right, we, so we know about at least two empires nearby. There could be more over here and over here. Not really sure. We'll just find out as we go. So how are things going on the surface here? That population point has definitely dropped. I guess there's no reason not to... Grab my construction ship and send it over here. Oh, there's a very good reason. I don't have the, re the resources. All right, so we can go ahead and Anomaly advance a little found. bit quicker here. Construction complete. All right, so anomaly, we're gonna leave it be. We constructed something. Yeah, there we go. Wow, this is this is a terrible start. Surveying things, there's nothing there. 
System survey complete. Oh, good. We got minerals. Uh, all right, so let's grab the construction ship, send it over here, build a mining station. Okay, so that anomaly is a 22% risk. Level 1, which is interesting that it's that high of a risk. An abandoned ship has been left to drift aimlessly above the moon. The massive sails protruding from its hull suggested it relied on solar power to function. We'll go ahead and try it. There's a, always a chance we'll lose our science ship. That would be devastating. All right, we've discovered an abandoned solar sail ship in orbit around the planet, our moon, actually. The sublight vessel was built by an unknown culture and appears to be several thousand years old. One of the massive sails is a large tear where some kind of object passed through, mostly a, most likely a meteoroid, which appears to have disabled the vessel. Although the technology of the ship is severely outdated, it does possess some interesting engineering design choices. Do we get some engineering research? Okay. So our science vessel... has searched everywhere that's nearby. So I guess we might as well survey this system because this is a good candidate for colonization. Oh. Crap. I had the construction ship selected. I'm hoping it continues its construction. Yeah, it should. We'll just queue it to move back into our system rather than... All right, whatever. We'll let it do its thing, then we'll tell it to do something. But definitely a rough start here, I think. But uh, this is something I can I manage a little bit better if we don't have superior empires nearby that are just going to overwhelm me. I can deal with the this situation. Oh, I'm paused. <laughs> All right. Construction complete. Okay, let's go ahead and grab these guys and just tell them to move over this way. Matter of fact, go ahead and build your mining station over here. All right, well, I think this is a good point to go ahead and put a cut in the video. So I hope you guys have enjoyed. This is Mouse Gunner signing out.